Welcome to More Than Photography Quick Tips, where we try to give you more than just the tip. I know we promised John Constantine today, but those full episodes take a ton of time and it's just not quite ready. Plus, it's my birthday today. But more importantly, it's the Queen's birthday. So in last week's episode, I said we'd give you guys a king tutorial. So even though you guys haven't seen the first episode on this character, which is easily a month away, this is Dream, aka Morpheus, aka a thousand other names, the main character from Sandman. Now Sandman was about to be made into Netflix's highest budget show ever, and then COVID-19 happened. But it is my favorite comic book of all time, and the best graphic novel series not written by Alan Moore. Turn down for what? So we're gonna use this to teach you how to loom a mask. So there's several ways to pull a key, the most popular being green screening, but one that often gets ignored and thrown to the wayside is luma keying. Luma meaning luminance, aka light and dark values. Now any of y'all that are familiar with masking can see exactly where this is going. So say you want to key a shot, but you don't have a green screen, you can just slap a big white card behind your subject, and if you light it right, boom, easy key. So once you have your image here in Photoshop, start by making a copy. Then go to your adjustments and select black and white. Now, human skin tone is more in the yellows and the blacks, so you want to make sure that those are definitely contrasting to whatever your backdrop color is. So if your backdrop color is white, you want to make sure that those are all black. Now go to your levels and bring up the contrast even more, differentiating that background from that foreground. Keep an eye out to make sure you're not losing any of your edge details. If you start to lose any edge fidelity, just use your mid-tone slider to shift them back around. Don't worry if you have any issues with the hair or any weird edge lines, we'll take care of those in a bit. Once that's done, select your black and white layer and cut it using Control X. Next, select your original layer, create an empty layer mask, and then go to your channels tab. Go to the layer mask channel that's been helpfully provided for you and paste your black and white image in there. Now since white is opaque and black is transparent, hit Control I to invert the mask. Now when you go back to your layers panel, you'll see that you have this lovely layer mask on your original image. Double click on it to bring up your masking options. First you want to bring up your brush tool to fix any issues inside the subject. And then grab your edge brush and select a smart radius of one pixel and then start painting over the strands of hair on the edges. So you've got all the hair pieces back in. Click decontaminate colors and press OK. Boom, you're done. B -b 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 bonus tip. So because most of our shoots involve heavy amounts of compositing, compositing tutorials are what most of you have requested from us. I thought I'd start giving you guys at least some of the pieces. So quickly, let's learn how to do a simple light wrap. Now, what a light wrap does is it samples your background image to bleed color and luminance attributes onto the very edges of your subject to help blend it into the background. Now, there are a lot of ways to use this, both for expressing light and shadows, but given that this is a quick tip, we're just going to go over the very basics. So you start with a keyed or masked out subject. Now import your background image, duplicate that background, control J, and place it above your subject. Right click on it and set it to clipping mask. Now control click on your subject or mask layer, and with the top background layer selected, create a mask. Now it looks like we haven't done anything, right? But if we zoom in here, make sure the mask is selected and go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, you can see we're getting just this subtle bleed over from our background onto our subject's edges. Now depending on the amount of light you want and your image size, you usually want to keep this at a lower value level, somewhere between 5 to 15. Now click OK. Now come over here to your blend modes and select screen. See that? It's using the color and luminance of the background to subtly wrap our image, blending it in just an easy little bit. Now in most cases you'll want to blur the background image itself so that there's no hard contrast lines, but you don't want to blur your mask more, so to do that just click this here little link chain icon and you're free to blur without affecting the mask. Now for this, you can raise the blur pretty high. Think about it as how light from a scene would actually interact with your subject. You want it to look diffused and refracted. And there you go, simple light wrap. Thank you very much guys for checking out this week's quick tip. I hope y'all are safe and practicing that social distancing, but also still getting out because cabin fever is a real thing. Next week, I promise we will have the full length John Constantine episode and then the John Constantine Photoshop tutorial after that. We'll have the full episode of Dream coming up in May, so if you're a Sandman fan, stay tuned. We got a lot of love coming for you. Including an artist collaboration with a super talented artist girlfriend. Oh, she's so adorable. She made me gourmet French toast this morning, guys. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon. And hey, guys, I love your faces, and I'll see you next week. <laughs>